Hi, this is Jessica from the IHP Library, and I'm here to talk about the MGH OneSearch database, the one-stop shop for scholarly articles at the IHP. So let's get started. So here I am at the library homepage, which you can see from the URL right up here in the bar is library.mghihp.edu. And you can see MGH OneSearch is really prominent right up at the top, hard to miss. And it really is the easiest and fastest way to find scholarly articles. And one of the reasons is because it searches across almost all of our other databases. So it includes searches of Medline, ERIC, CINAHL, PsycInfo, um, all of those. And so you just can do one search and search them all. It does a uh, lose a little bit of precision, um, but for some basic searches, that just is just fine. Okay, before I give searching a go, let me just talk a little bit about um, how you should be thinking about your search when you're going into it. So when you're searching MGH1 search, as you can see right here, the default is to search by keyword. Um, and what that means is that you are searching for words in the titles, abstracts, journal titles, those sorts of things. You're searching to, to find those words. And so basically what you have to do, um, a good way to think about it, is that you want to think about how an author is going to say something about your topic and then use those words to try to find it. You can frequently, when you're starting, you can start off really broad to just get a feel for what's out there. So we can do that here by searching for English language learners. Oh, you can see I've searched it before, so it pops up. Um, sometimes just suggestions will pop up as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and select that, hit search or enter or whatever, um, and we'll start to see some results. So yeah, when I said broad, I really meant it. So we have 32,000 plus articles uh, on our list. So what I would start to do is just scroll through and see what's out there. What kinds of articles are people talking about? And it would give me an idea of how I might want to narrow my search. This database is really nice because every once in a while you also get one of these things, this research starter which is really a good intro to a topic um, and will sort of summarize what the research literature looks like. So if you see one of these and you're kind of not sure where you want to focus, this could be um, a really big help. All right, but let's say we already know where we want to focus. We want to focus on um, the difficulties of um, identifying uh, learning disabilities in English language learners. So we might use some of those words and pop them right in. English language learners. And then we um, talked about identifying or identification. And of course, part of speech does matter. Um, and uh, learning disabilities. So we just put it all in there in a row and the database can deal with it. You can use, if you want to put it in as a question, as a sentence, that's fine too. It can deal with all of that kind of natural language searching. Um, we click search and we go from 32,000 down to 178. Not bad for a first try. Um, and so again, you could start to look through these and it does limit at this, at this point, the limit for full text is on. So you are only going to see articles where there's going to be some sort of full text link. So this is an ERIC um, document and so there's a link to the ERIC document right there or you might see PDF links um, here. So you can click right on those and the whole article or document or whatever it might be should come up. So we were pretty happy with our search results. 178, it's a little much to look through. Um, and, I'm, and I haven't even looked really at the titles to see whether they're relevant or not. I've just kind of um, scrolled through and quickly looked at them. So I'd want to, of course, take a closer look. And let's say you weren't happy with your search results. Maybe you got only three articles on your list or you still were dealing with hundreds of articles. Um, and so you knew you needed to change your search. Your search words weren't quite working for you. So here we get back to that idea of keywords and guessing at what authors, what vocabulary authors are going to use to describe your topic. Um, so one tip is to think about the individual terms you've used and other ways you might uh, express those ideas. So for example, one of our search terms is English language learners, but there are lots of different ways authors might refer to that term, and so you want to be thinking about that. And especially if you want to be looking across disciplines, meaning um, 
into different uh, academic areas. For example, if you want to look at education literature, they might call it one thing. If you want to look at psychology literature, they might call it another. If you want to look at speech language pathology literature, they might call it a third thing. Um, so, or people within those disciplines even could call it different things. So you always want to be thinking about that um, and considering alternatives. So here are some ideas for other phrases and words you might use in your searches to come up with different results. And this actually brings up a good point with you see that both bilingual and bilingualism are on the list and that's because when our search engine searches it searches for exactly what you've typed in. It doesn't try to guess at um, alternatives to what you might want. So if you type in bilingual it is not going to bring back an article that refers to it as bilingualism. Um, so, so just be aware of that, that you might need to even adjust for parts of speech. So now let's go back to our search and make some changes. Um, before we searched English language learners, oh it's from right, right here so I can remember, English language learners, identification and learning disabilities. We searched for those terms. Sorry, my mouse went a little off course there. Um, so we might change it up. We might change one of the terms. We might change each of the terms. We might change, you know, so you, you have a choice to kind of mix and match your ideas. Um, so let's say we found out that um, that we are looking at the education literature and they definitely do call it English language learners, but they call it, instead of identification, they call it assessment. Um, and maybe there's a whole pocket of people who are looking at um, learning disorders instead of learning disabilities. So we could try that combination. We click search and we get 136. Some of them may be the same, but some of them will certainly be different. Um, so this is a nice way to kind of make sure that you're seeing things that are relevant um, and considering different um, ways to get to that literature. That does it for the intro to MGH1 search. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. The Ask a Librarian uh, button is right on the library homepage and we're always happy to help.